Hello, I'm Atubo George, and I'm so glad to be bringing God's truth to you today. Now, this is a new week, and we just have two days to the close of the month of November. I want to use this opportunity to invite you for our 24-hour fast that is coming up on the 1st of December. Now, every 1st of the month, the Lord commanded us to enter the month with a 24-hour fast, and, and God has been doing amazing things in our lives and we've been receiving several testimonies. So this month, I want to invite you, I mean, this next edition, I want to invite you. So you plan for it, plan for the first, which is on Wednesday, but the fast begins by 12 midnight Tuesday, Tuesday breaking into Wednesday. So 30th breaking into first, 12 midnight West African time. And now, but you can join us from whatever part of the world you're listening. Um, to us from. So on, on 12 midnight, Wednesday, break, Tuesday breaking into Wednesday, we are starting the fast and we are holding prayer meetings via Zoom. And those prayer meetings will be at the top of every watch. So at 12 midnight, we're going to pray. At 3 a.m., we're going to pray. At 6 a.m., 9 a.m., 12 noon, 3 p.m., 6 p.m., 9 p.m., which is the last watch. But we'll round off the fast by 11.30 p.m. And then we'll have prayer until 12 midnight. So that was makes it, that's what makes it 24 hours. I want you to join us. Don't miss this one because this is the last month of the year. And the Spirit of God wants to do amazing things in your life. So plan for this. Whatever information you need, apart from the one that's on the screen right now, you can call us, you can send us a message, and we will surely get back to you. Praise God. Come on now, let's call for that daily bread. Are you ready? Say this with me. Say, Father, I receive today my daily bread. It's coming to me now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Trust me, a miracle is going to happen in your life today. Hallelujah. Can we just bless the Lord? Father, we thank you for today's broadcast. Thank you for the things that you have in your heart for this day. We trust in the Holy Spirit to guide us into all truth. So today, Lord, I know we are going to speak truth according to that which is in your heart for this day. Thank you for the blessing of your word. And I declare every body is lifted right now. Every yoke is destroyed. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Praise God. Now, we are getting to the close of the year 2021. December is the last month of the year. Uh, what's in your heart? What, what, what do you consider? You know, this is the time many people want to reflect on the year and ask themselves, did I make any progress this year or am I, have I been stagnant this year? Listen, if you want to know if you made progress this year, I'll tell you the areas to check. Don't look at the physical things yet. Now, you may have gotten some physical stuff, but you see, if these things are not in place, the real essence of life, if it's not in place, then that physical thing you achieved this year, you might just lose it. But there are things that will be in place that you know that, look, if I have this, then I know that whatever I have that is physical, I will never lose it. Rather, like Jesus said, he that has, more shall be given to him and he will have abundance. He that does not have, even that which he has shall be taken away from him. Praise God. So, what do you look at? First of all, look at your growth spiritually. Have you grown in 2021? How do you know that you have grown? Not because 
Now, you, if you're growing spiritually, you will know more scriptures. So you will quote more scriptures. You will pray more, praise God. But then, more especially, one area to check your growth is the fruit that all these word, the word of God, spiritual activities produces in you. And now the sum total of it is, or the total of it is, are you more patient? Patience is the final test for everybody. Are you more patient? Now, when I mean patient, not, not just talk about waiting. I've thought on patience before. If you, if you didn't join us, then go trace it. Look for it on YouTube and find those messages and listen, listen attentively to them. Patience is the way you know that you've grown spiritually. So if you find yourself, you're not patient, you're just still, oh, you know, Ah, you haven't grown yet. You haven't grown yet. So if you are applying God's word in your mouth, speaking it, thinking it, doing it, it's going to produce the fruit of the Spirit in you. And one way to know that the fruit of the Spirit is at work in you is simply patient. The more patient you are, or the more patient you realize you are becoming, the more matured you are getting spiritually. That's just the truth. Now, if, if you want to really, really, really make progress in life, I don't know of any sure way I can tell you, but the way of the Lord Jesus. Now, what do I mean the way of the Lord Jesus? How much of him do you know? If I ask you this question, do you know Jesus? I'm not speaking of the regular knowing of his name or who he is. I'm talking about personally, personally. Do you have a relationship with him? Do you know him? And does he know you? That's very important because if that relationship is not there, then there are lots and lots of things that are going to be deficient in your life. And it is his relationship that gives us the confidence of what we live or what we do. If you are not confident of your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, then I tell you, you are on a slippery ground. Or like the songwriter calls it, all other grounds are sinking sand. If you are not on that one-on-one -on -one relationship with him and you know that this relationship with him is producing fruits in your life, you remember Jesus, maybe we should go there, Matthew chapter 16, verse 13. Matthew 16, 13, I want you to follow me now. He says, when Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, some others, Jeremiah's, or one of the prophets. He said unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjonas, for flesh and blood are not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. Jesus asked them, Who do men say? Who do people think I am? They, they began to mention different names, but then he he took it home now. Okay, you, what about you? Who do you say that I am? And Peter spoke up and said, this is who you are. You are the Christ. And Jesus said, Peter, that didn't come by flesh and blood. But my father himself was the one who revealed it to you. Now that tells us something. The father reveals the son to us. Now you think it would be the other way around. The son introduces the father to us. No, but he says the father is the one who reveals the Son to us. So Jesus said, Hey, Peter, flesh and blood did not reveal this thing to you, but my Father in heaven. Now, why was Jesus concerned to know what they thought about him? Because the ministry that he was sent into the world for is the ministry to give men eternal life. And Jesus himself said, eternal life 
is knowing him and the father. He said that's what eternal life is. Knowing him and the father. John chapter 17. Jesus spoke these words, lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, from verse 1 now, I'm reading from verse 1. Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son, that your son also may glorify you as you have given him authority over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as you have given him. Jesus quoted, quoted here, speaking to the Father. He says, Father, the hour has come. Glorify yourself. Then he made a profound statement. As you have given him authority over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as you have given him. So Jesus has been given the authority to have eternal life and to give it out. But he is only going to give it out to the ones that God will lead to him. And the ones God will lead to him, they will stay with him. Now, his job is to give eternal life to as many as will come to him. And that job is not in the sweet by and by. That job is being done now, right now, today. This job is being done. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Oh, thank you, precious Lord Jesus. He's giving the Son that power, that authority. And the Son watches out for those the Father will give to him. Notice or remember, Jesus said in John chapter 6, No man can come to me except my Father who sends me draws him. So it is the Father that draws people to the Son, Jesus. And when they come to the Son, Jesus, and recognize him as the Son, he gives, Jesus gives them eternal life. He, that's what he does. That's his job. And that was his job before the foundation of the world. God never, never ordained that for anybody else. And because Jesus qualified in that he gave up himself in obedience to the Father, even to the point of death, he gave himself up. So because of this, the Father looked at him and said, Look, son, I will glorify you. And he became... That's why we call him the captain of our salvation. Now I'm going to be explaining things to you. And I pray that the, your hearts will be open to receive these things because they are very, very important. If you don't understand what I'm about to share with you, I, I, no, I, I just pray the Spirit of God will give you clarity and, and understanding in this. Because your eyes will be open. I, I'm telling you this week, we're going to have a great time talking about Jesus. That your eyes will be open to see him for who he really is. And that you'll be able to follow him carefully. And then see, Paul says, that you may know what is the calling, what is the hope of, the, of your calling. And that you will receive the inheritance among the saints. That is desire. And that's Jesus' desire also. So this whole week we'll be talking about knowing Jesus. Knowing Jesus. Jesus himself was concerned to be sure that the disciples know him. Because if they don't know him, then they will not be recipients of the eternal life that he came to give. Because he said it, we read it, he said, this is life eternal, John 17 verse 3. And this is life eternal life, that they may know thee, the only true God and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. If you know God and know Jesus Christ, now not just knowing their names, know them personally, then he said you qualify, you have eternal life. And that's to tell you there is an attitude to which you exhibit eternal life. Those are the things we'll be talking about this week. 
But I pray for you right now. That the Lord, the Spirit of God will help you position rightly, even for eternal life. That he will pull you to the place where you begin to see Jesus for who he is. And that his life will truly be made manifest in you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Have the best day ever today. We love you. God bless you. Bye.